morning, this is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning, and hello, kids, and welcome to season four and episode number, um, well, to be totally honest, I'm slightly discombobulated, so I really have no idea. It's 426. Uh, 426 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Dry Comedian Network. Yay! Today, recording day is Wednesday, July 17th, 2024, and uh, it's a grayish kind of day here at the Beaver Lodge. I'm your host, the eager beaver, pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver, hey, and with me as always is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we are totally MacGyvering it today. Uh, Mr. Grizzly, as you know, is on the road in Alberta. And uh, for some reason, everything electronic at this and here at the Beaver Lodge has decided that my microphone is being used uh, by some other application, which is impossible because I only use my microphone to do this. So. uh... (laughs) Yeah, I have no idea what's happening. I am in a parking lot of a McDonald's Wi-Fi hotspotting via my phone because the McDonald's Wi-Fi was not passable. I'm uh, about a 15-minute drive from the campsite because the signal there just wasn't strong enough to try and run one, which was kind of a shame because I thought it'd be neat if I could do it from the picnic table. But unfortunately, technology is not allowing me to do everything I needed to do. The funny thing is, though, I am able to host and produce the show from a laptop in a parking lot in a car. <laughs> and it seems to be working. Whereas on your end, where you're still in your off your studio at home, nothing's working. <laughs> Yep, I'm in. I'm in my home with like direct plug-in internet with Man. the modem. Like, yeah, it's just not working. Five millimeters know. away from the, the, and I can't get the mic to work. So yeah, uh, but good. Uh, everybody, I, I am seeing that the the kids on the chat are saying that uh, we can be heard well. So. That's good. Yes, Gremlins in the system, Kit Carroll, definitely. Uh, uh, and we thank you for your patience because uh, uh, we got started half an hour late today trying to figure this out. But we are here, and you are here, and we are very, 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 very happy to see you. Yes, we are. And while we're at it, we're very, very happy for our podcast founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Misfee Mysteries from Corbin Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. Uh, Mr. Grizzly, how's your vacation going, and how's your mental health today? Uh, vacation's, uh, great, actually. We're, I'm in, I'm in, uh, Invermere, British Columbia in the Kootenays right now. Ooh, uh, nice. Camping. And, uh, we're going to go out on a hike later to some hot springs, radium hot springs, not far from here, just like two minutes away. Uh, we're camping mm-hmm. in, uh, in Dry Gulch at Red Streak. So, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, having a good time so far. Uh, I've had a chance to go, to go to radium hot springs. I've only been in that part near the, the BC Alberta border once. 
Um, mm. It happened to be the very, very, very first time I went skiing as well. So uh, let's just say that um, uh, in that area, it, it's not like um, Mont Saint Marie. So um, I pretty much did only the bunny hills <laughs> for a whole weekend. Oh my God. But the first time looking down, it was so steep and going like, this is the bunny hill? What? <laughs> so, I mean, it, it's completely different over there. Uh, but yes, we did get to spend one day at Radium Springs. And uh, yeah, that, that was a, a very, very beautiful memory. Yeah, yeah, well, it was so nice we're gonna, to we're gonna, in the springs. We're going to venture over to the Fairmont Springs. We're going to check out Radium, and there's another one we're going to hike to later on. So, yeah, we're going to check it all out and have a good time today. Maybe uh, maybe rent a kayak later and go out onto the water. We haven't figured Ooh. it all out yet. I mean, we still have to, you know, we're going to fire up some breakfast in a little bit. So, yeah. Nice. Nice. That sounds like a perfect day. Oh, I hope Should I hope. Fantastic for you. It's going to be 36 today. It's very, very hot here. Mm. It's dry, mm. but it's very, very hot. So yeah, it's been, I think that the, the coolest day I've experienced thus far was 24 last Friday when we went to, for a float down the Bow River. Other than that, it's been 30 and above every day. And of course, uh, most people in this part of the country do not have air conditioning. So uh, shopping malls and offices are kind of busy right now. <laughs> mm. Um, over at my end, uh, things, th things are, um, mm, mm, <laughs> I guess that's a scientific word for it. Mm, um, we're, we're very, very, very happy with the good news, of course, with the publication coming. Um, but of course, uh, as kids and cubs uh, may be aware, um, we had a little bit of an accident, uh, auto accident a few weeks ago. And, uh, uh dealing with the insurance is proving a little more complicated than usual because um, I believe Bruce Sweetie really wants to see if there's any way that the car can actually be repaired and everybody else seems to be uh, pretty much uh, just like, no, no, just write it off and let's get this off our plate. Uh, yeah. So it, 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 it's been a bit a bit of a battle just trying to get it brought to a shop to find out how much it would cost to actually fix it if we wanted it to fix it. Uh, so it's a... Uh... Oh, things are heavy now and then. <laughs> a little stressful. Yeah, a little, a stressful. little stressful. A little stressful, I have to say. Uh, but otherwise, otherwise good. Uh, just, uh, yesterday uh, and the day before were a bit of a a rougher day uh, but um you know a, a, and um then w when you have a day like that you think okay i'm gonna go do something to like get away from it so yesterday i went to play tennis because when you play tennis there's like only the ball right you have to keep your eye on the ball at all times there's only the ball you can't be distracted you can't think of anything else so if you got problems playing tennis is great because all you have to do is think of the ball. Uh, well, uh, I don't know. I can't. I don't know what it is I was thinking of, but uh, I played like I had only left feet and thumbs. There's nothing doing. <laughs> Just nothing doing. Uh, so it ended up frustrating me more than <laughs> actually doing me some good. So uh, uh, yeah, it's been a little bit of a uh, uh, kind of past 24 hours for me, but. Or 48, actually, I should say. But, but, uh, overall, you know, things are good. Food on the table, nobody's sick, you know. So there are problems you can get through. Perspective. It's just, it, it's, it, it's just been, it, it's just a little heavy now and then. Mm -hmm. I have to admit. All right. Uh, but I, all of you send uh, the, those beautiful wishes, and uh, yes, uh, especially after it happened. So uh, thank you for your kind words. They did help a lot. All right, on to the news. Uh, finally, the first big news of the day has nothing to do with uh, Ronald Rose, even though he is on the agenda. Uh, but we got rain. Well, we got rain. Toronto got rain. Uh, <laughs> we got some rain over here, but uh, I guess there was something that happened that blew the system a little further away. 
so here at the Beaver Lodge, uh, you know, we while we did get some rain, it was like nowhere near. There was no flooding. There was no nothing. Uh, but in uh, the Toronto area, oh boy, um, yeah, second such hammered, incident. Eh? They really got hammered. Uh, second such incident in about uh, eleven years, um, and just. Uh, you could see the pictures. I mean, it was uh, really something. Um, so this morning, several roads still remain closed. Uh, there was record rainfall and flash flooding. Uh, as we talked about the other day, Hurricane Barrel dumped uh, about 100 millimeters in one day in certain places. Well, uh, Toronto got that. Got about 100 millimeters. Uh, so just uh, flash flooding. Uh, lots of power out. Uh, I don't know how many in total what, what received uh, what reached at the maximum, but on one news report I heard up to 167,000 people uh, without power. Uh, Toronto Dan was one. Uh, he was without power, I think, for about seven hours or something. Uh, so, well, and, uh, and the ridiculous thing is they had plans to mitigate this a bunch of years ago, but the former mayor, John Tory, said basically no. <laughs> nah, we don't need to do that. Yeah. And then there was some uh, flood mitigation or something like this uh, back in 2019. And that, you know, uh, something that the Ford government didn't uh, do what it should on. Uh, I'm going to try to find the article to get some additional information and bring it to you through there. Uh, but I saw that going through the Twitter feed yesterday. Um, That's pathetic. So, yeah, many people, well, listen, again, right? It's the whole climate thing, right? People don't want to act. Politicians don't want to act now because everything that they do now doesn't necessarily show up in time for the next election cycle. So they delay it because there's nothing in it for them as opposed to building a new hospital where they could turn around and point to it and see, ta-da, right? And then for the mitigation stuff, it's the same thing, right? It's like, okay, we built this medication. Oh, well, we didn't have, we haven't used it in the last 10 years. What a waste of money that was. And then you, and then, and then, yes, but you take a political hit. Yeah. Right. Until something like this happens. So there's really for people who think in four year cycles, there's nothing in it for them. Mm -hmm. Right. They literally have to be doing the statesmanship work and decided that it needs to be done or the situation has to get so bad. Like it was in China at one point with the, the, the air being so smoggy that you know the government knew that if it didn't do anything, there would be such a revolt and of such a great number of people. And there's a reason why you know, I saw an article today that China is like installing wind and solar at the rate of something like uh, five plants per week or something. I mean, I just yeah. ridiculously fast anyway. So, but there, they are government for life. And they only yeah. risk being overthrown by a mass popular revolt. So they can do a long term project. Over yeah, here, and, and anybody's anytime somebody says, I want to do a project, but it won't yield the benefit for until 15 years down the road, hmm. it goes nowhere. It goes nowhere. And all of this stuff, when you think about the climate, when you think of all the, the stuff that is baked in, they're, they're telling us for the next 28 years, well, that's hmm. seven election cycles. <laughs> Who's going to act for seven election cycles ahead? Right, it's, it's well, the, the political process as it is structured is kind of wasn't that not, one of the not conducive to it happening. Wasn't that one of the tenets of responsible government, though? Yes, Taking it care was. Of the people. Yes, that's just been completely ignored because everybody just wants to hang on to their job. Yep. Instead of doing the right thing. Right, and as we keep on saying, and I got this from over the fifth column, but it's true. It always costs less in the long run to just do the right thing the first time. Yeah, I, I know. Uh, always. From, from my profession, I've been telling people, if you don't fix this, it's going to cost you a lot more. So pay me pay me a little now, or you're going to have to pay me a whole lot more when I kind of come back and, and repair it all. Yeah. Yes, I understand right now you got a bit of an upfront cost that you, you, you can't really stomach, but if you don't do this now, I will see you in two years, and it's going to cost you ten times this amount. So it's your decision. Yeah. It's like, so yeah, um, there's still a number of areas where power needs to be restored. Um, 
many homes have been flooded to quite different degrees. Some had a little bit of flooding, but some of them actually saw water just gushing in to their house. Mm -hmm. um, major well, roadways. Union Station was flooded out badly. Well, that's another thing, right, where people are talking about, like, this, didn't we just spend, like, a whole bunch of money fully renovating Union Station top to bottom? And there's, mm -hmm. dude, it's like, really? Yeah. That's where, pe that, that's where people start to get pissed off. Mm -hmm. They said, we spent all that money, if you were living there, trying to navigate through the, through the renovation. It was a nightmare for a few years. Yes. I guess, and you endured all of that, and then it's there, and then the first boom rainstorm. Oh my God! There's like sewage, and it's the, you know, it's like you renovated it to make it look pretty, but you didn't do any. Yes, I said yesterday. Yeah, when I was tweeting it, you remember that movie Poltergeist? Mm -hmm. This yeah. at the end of the movie, we're in the they're in the pool. And all the skeletons are popping up. And the developer comes. Yeah. And the guy goes, you son of a bitch. You moved the headstones, but you didn't move the body. You yeah. only moved the headstones. You only moved the headstones. <laughs> it's just like... So they could save money. <sighs> That's the kind of stuff that drives people nuts. If you're going to do the job, do the whole freaking job. Uh, yeah. So, um, the Don Valley Parkway, the Gardener, the Lakeshore, all of it flooded. Lakeshore Boulevard was actually just Lake Boulevard. But, um, um, of course, um, what? <laughs> uh, of course, um, the site of the future water world ford spa casino yeah great place uh, to put an underground parking lot there doug yeah that's gonna flood and they want to keep developing the green belt which takes away from flood mitigation services because it absorbs them. anyway yep. all in pursuit you, of the almighty dollar if you look at a map there's this like this big crescent and Highway 413 going through right through another area that could, you know, help mitigate floods. Yeah, and it all runs downhill. And what's at the bottom of that hill? Ontario Place, where that Therm yeah. Spa will be, where that $600 million underground parking lot will be. Why is he building such a big parking lot? Because it's going to be a casino, not a spa. Mm-hmm. Yep, indeed. So, uh, it brings back the question of what needs to be done uh, in the city to continue to upgrade the infrastructure. Uh, Mayor Olivia Chow. Um, interesting move here. Um, uh, said that the federal government had provided some funding on the floodplain, but not enough. And there's a request in with them and for the provincial government to step up somewhat. Uh, the federal and provincial government, she said, the federal and provincial government can partner with us so that we can do more flood mitigation measures. Uh, so it seems that uh, she's, I mean, I, I this is something I do not know about. I don't know how much mm -hmm. of this is federal, how much of this is provincial and whatnot. Maybe it's legitimate to say Andres and Trudeau here, here too, here, um, but, um, Uh, she's definitely uh, saying, okay, well, fine, give me money. Which is probably what she should be doing anyway. So, Well, <laughs> yeah. Um, from the province, some federal money. Uh, she was the first one to raise uh, property taxes in, like, I don't know, a few yeah. decades. Which yeah. was needed because, uh, let's face it, uh, no mayor was willing to, to raise taxes because they knew that it would be their death knell, but it's like but your infrastructure is crumbling. The city is broke. Yeah, the city, the city almost, doesn't have men. Sorry. The city of almost 8 million people in the, in the GTA, right? The whole area. And they're, they're all affected by it. Anyway. 
and, and the city it, it, yep and it's the level of government that has the least means to raise taxation and raise yeah. money for itself so i mean you literally have to send there hey yeah largest city in canada you don't want that you don't want this to happen again but you want me to take care of it give me money yeah right uh so yeah some of those areas are still closed um that's about the, the the most recent report I got from probably around like uh, 6 a.m. Uh, news today uh, about where things stand. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I didn't hear much in the news about any other parts of the country where that may have been affected uh, by this. Um, so it seems to have been pretty uh, Toronto-centric uh, in terms of coverage. So if uh, it did hit uh, pretty big somewhere else, um, I, I, do not, I do not know. Do not yet know about it. No. Let's put it that way. Um, so yeah, that's going on. That's going to be a bit of a mess. And uh, at the same time as this is going on, of course, in Canada, we have a uh, first minister's meeting going on in Halifax. In Halifax, um, yeah. Yeah. Now, interestingly enough, um, events like this in Toronto the assassination attempt on the president of the United States leading into the Republican National Convention where J.D. Vance is picked as the vice president. Um, and then lots of stuff going on in uh, Gaza and, and uh, Orban doing his thing. Um, the provincial ministers, first ministers are not getting as much coverage as they were probably like for their annual um, Daddy Trudeau, uh, I spent all of the money on cheeseburgers. Can I have more, please? Meeting. Well, the, the the other thing we have to to take a look at here is the uh, ongoing and ever evolving new scandal uh, of corruption with the Daniel Smith UCP government in Alberta. The uh, level of corruption there is really beginning to rear its ugly head. If you check out Nate's re most recent tweets. Um, from the breakdown, Alberta, oh boy, oh boy, yeah. and she is already saying, oh, the left needs to tone down its rhetoric. This coming from a woman who said, please put this minister in your crosshairs. Yep. <sighs> oh, yeah. Pe people who live in glass houses, right? She, uh, she is, uh, she's looking at a lot of problems here. Uh, she had a tweet yesterday accusing the federal government of trying to cripple us. Yeah, well, from what I understand, the the you know the Tylenol scandal mm -hmm. uh, that ties into about three other people uh, that involves free hockey tickets, and uh, it's just a level of of uh, corruption that um, I think only Doug Ford could be accused of, of doing more. Yeah, it's just indeed. brutal. Uh, it's absolutely and, brutal. Yeah, I mean the. Uh, and then there's a whole thing with uh, David Parker going on in the background there. Um, yeah, he's discussing her, her level of corruption. Sorry, I'm trying to hold this on a steering wheel. <laughs> oh, okay. That's what's going on. Uh, yeah, he is uh, definitely uh, trying to do that. Um, he had the... Uh, oh, my God. I'm trying to find it here. Don't know why. Uh, uh, nothing is cooperating today. This is <laughs> this is really tough uh, today. Um, yes, uh, he did put out a tweet uh, indicating that he was going to reveal some information and blow some stuff up with regard to uh, uh, the Tylenol purchase. Uh, it was uh, definitely uh, Nate Pike uh, from The Breakdown, uh, Alberta. So I'm going to just go there right now to try and find it. Uh, but yeah, he, uh, he had posted something uh, and then more information started to come in. Yeah, after the Parker uh, tweet. And there's been DMs sent DMs. into Nate. Yeah. 
yes, uh, that that is unverified. Uh, but uh, some of the stuff that is followed after, and I still can't find the original one for Parker, even though I literally bookmarked it and highlighted it seconds before the show so that I can find it and talk about it. But it is gone. So everything technology today, I'm sorry, it's just, it's just not happening for me. Um, but the one that came in is, uh, Hearing Smith took a private jet to the Vancouver game. She posted pics, played, provided by Makami Guy Vlad. Boxes in Vancouver from both Makami and Sam Mraish. Clear conflict of interest. PO attending boxes during playoffs at 50K a box is straight up bribery. Follow the money. Several cabinet ministers went to multiple games. PO and staff went to several games. Seven plus. 50K a box during playoffs is normal. That's a big chunk of cash. Um, let's see what yeah, all... context in the next tweet. So he says, San Mraish has facilitated a number of high profile deals for the UCP, including the Tylenol. Vlad is one of the owners of a Makami College, which is the beneficiary of changes Smith made to funding models. And Makami is the school of former principal secretary to Smith, Erica Barutis, Barutis, I guess, is a department head of, and is also the director of external relations. Again, this is an unverified direct message, but it is not the only one making these claims tonight. Strap in, Alberta. Looks like we are in for a bumpy ride. Yeah, it's just going to unravel in front of our very eyes. And uh, who knows? Will she get charged? Probably not. They'll change the laws so she can skate. I mean, they already did change the, the, uh, the amount of money they can receive in, in political gifts. Uh, and yes. Yes. It was about a year ago they did that, I think. It's just, it's absurd what's taking place in, in right in front of our very eyes, and it seems there's nothing we can damn well do about it, which really pisses me off, because they're, not only are they pissing on us, but they're they're doing it and laughing at us while sipping on champagne. So, you know, I don't know what the recourse is. There's no, we don't have any recall rules in this country when it comes to any sort of government, whether it's federal or provincial, or even municipal for that matter. So... You know, they're, they're just going to continue to do this and get away with it until somebody somewhere has the cojones to charge them. And <clears throat> yes, I realize that it requires evidence and discovery and yada, yada, yada. But how do they get to continue to get away with this constantly? And nobody, nobody's doing anything about it. It's just, yeah. it's just, oh, so frustrating. There we go. I finally found it. Um, so uh, with Nate saying, so uh, guess the romance is over. Also, we have some questions. David Parker's tweet, what is the connection between Turkish Tylenol, the Edmonton Oilers, private jets, and Premier Daniel Smith? Corruption. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, he basically then just uh, dropped that. Uh, it seems that... Uh, Marco Hugenboss has also gotten in, uh, involved and uh, said, uh, certainly the people who make the rules know the rules, right? We hope you enjoyed your flight. Sincerely concerned Alberta taxpayers uh, as he uh, highlights uh, a section of the Conflict of Interest Act. And then says, it is becoming increasingly obvious that Premier Smith has taken the path of premiers before her. Smith has become nothing more than a figurehead who smiles at the cameras and delivers campaign style speeches. Rodeos, hockey games, ribbon cutting ceremonies, and party fundraisers are the order of the day. She's the consummate 21st century politician, image over substance, spoken woke slogans. Daniel yeah, Smith? Yeah, yeah I know. He's pushing woke slogans. Okay. Yeah. Pushing multiculturalism. Yeah. Are we talking about the same Daniel Smith here? D, well, it's, uh, it's, it's D, and climate and change with the shade of blue. Too woke for him and too multicultural for him is what it boils down to. Yeah. Okay. Justin Trudeau and the NDP are the cause of all the problems in our province. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're causing her to do all these things that you don't no, no. like? These are, these are people with imagination. Just to put the NDPR, the cause of all the problems in our province, but like premiers before, strong words and carefully crafted letters are all, the only resistance this administration puts up. The future prime minister has also found a loyal subject in our premier, 
the provincial police force pension plan and other sovereignty initiatives have all but been abandoned at the behest of federal conservatives. Political patronage is the order of the day. Scandal quote premiers and loyal soldiers are guaranteed a soft landing on some board or if they're lucky, uh, they're misspelled. A newly minted crown corporation. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, these people, again, I'll say it again, they can't stand each other. We said even on the floor of the Republican National Congress as well when uh, Matt Gates uh, started going after uh, Kevin McCarthy and said, hey, Kevin, when are you speaking? Kevin McCarthy's been on a little revenge tour of his own, by the way. But revenge, retribution, right? These are the words that we hear. Mm -hmm. This is among themselves at the camp. Yeah. I guess we see it in the convoy movement as well. Speaking of they, that, I know it's cheap gossip, but it seems that uh, Tamara and Dwayne are not together anymore. Well, yeah, Tamara and her husband have, have split. Uh, yes. And Chris Barber seems to be uh, attached at her hip because I believe he still wants some of that money she seems to have allegedly mm -hmm. absconded with. Yes, and uh, Pat King, apparently, uh, who I had so much to say, apparently is not going to testify in his own defense. Oh, that's interesting. Well. Yes, uh, but back to uh, this kind of stuff. So, yes, uh, David Parker is, uh, you know, saying, you know, going to blow the whistle uh, on all the corruption. It seems, it, it does seem indeed uh, that uh, Danny's a little more open to business, open for business, let's put it that way. Uh, and again, what is it about like tickets for shows at restaurants? I mean, why, why do our politicians always go so damn cheap? I mean, my God, Clarence Thomas at the Supreme Court got like luxury trips on yachts to yeah. Indonesia and tuition paid for the person. Uh, he said back then he was sort of like a son, but hasn't apparently, according to the, guy was like the son hasn't had any word from in a couple of years since he got in trouble with the law, uh, unlike Joe Biden with his son. Um, he just, just cut bait on him. Uh, but he had his whole mother's house renovated. They were going for hockey tickets, box seats for one game. I just, uh, my God. If you're gonna well, sell yourself, respect yourself. Don't go for so damn cheap. Well, don't don't give them ideas, man. I mean, <laughs> no, but come on, man. You're willing to sacrifice democracy for a pair of tickets in a box, like. Yeah, God, I know. If you're gonna be corrupt, have standards for God's sakes. Jeez. <sighs> oh. Pardon me. I just want it all to be fixed. Yes. I want them all. To, I want them all to pay for their sins, and uh, I'm tired of it. I'm just tired of them getting away with it. It never ends. They, and it, it seems to me that like nobody seems to care. Yeah. Sorry, I had a little thing there. So, you got Doug Ford bringing in his scandals there. You got Danielle Smith coming in with her scandals. Andrew Fury can't be there because he's dealing with everything that's going on with wildfires in his province. So it's not the mm -hmm. best first ministers meeting uh, and not the best conditions uh, that they can uh, uh, ask for in order to get what they want. But there's another thing happening that uh, media-wise, it does seem... Um, that the premiers are not uh, getting the help that they thought that they would get. Normally, when we have a first minister's uh, conference, now this is not the first minister's conference where the prime minister also shows up and meets with them. This is just amongst themselves so that they coordinate their strategies, work on you know, common priorities, coordinate their ask for when they come time to meet with the prime minister. Um, but rather than starting off with give us more money it started off with uh 
Tim Houston, uh, Premier Tim Houston saying, uh, you know, federal government stay in your own lane, mm -hmm. um, which would uh, be met with uh, Canadians tell premiers, um, fine, uh, but if you determine it's your lane, then do your damn job. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of things, health and, and all this kind of stuff, and housing and rent that are kind of your lane. And you haven't been doing it, which is why the federal government's needed to step in. And then there are other things like Daniel Smith, when you say that uh, you're just going to bypass or opt out of dental when it's an insurance program offered to individuals and not from the province. And yeah, exactly. It is. So uh, that's it's not, not a you being in your matter. lane. That's not you being in your lane either. Yeah. Right. Uh, and we have a bunch of other things too. We have like Saskatchewan, who was, uh, uh, you know, there was court proceedings going on to get the 50, 28 of the 56 million that they owe for carbon, carbon claims. And uh, well, Saskatchewan blinked because it seems that the, they've uh, stopped the court proceedings so that they can reach to some other type of deal. Uh, people in Saskatchewan are presenting that like, uh, we stopped the federal government from stealing our money. It's like, uh, it's already been established that people can garnish accounts, mm -hmm. yeah. especially the government when there's money owing to the government. And uh, it, this is all because you've decided that you weren't going to remit the money and so, the, oh, Saskatchewan's money is safe. It's not Saskatchewan's money if it's money that's owed to the federal government. Exactly. So, uh, I, I, they're sitting there going, like, we won, we delayed, we got one. It's like, no, you blinked. You blinked. So, uh, all of these premiers are not going in there with uh, the strongest of positions. Um, and it seems that. Uh, a lot, uh, while they're saying enough is enough with federal jurisdiction, it seems that uh, the overall media consensus is, uh, yeah, you know what, uh, before you start asking for more money, uh, why don't you show us how productive you've been with the money you've gotten so far? Well, they're just they're going to keep the robbers blind because they can get away with it. And again, it mm -hmm. never gets answered for it. So, yeah. look, we're, we, so, we've got a level of corruption in provincial governments right now that uh, I've never seen before in, in the history of this country, and they just continue to get away with it. Nobody's getting charged. Nobody's going to jail. Somebody somewhere is getting paid off, and it just goes on and on and on and on. And all they do is deny and deflect and then blame the prime minister for everything that's bad in their province when 99% of it is their own damn doing. So yeah. to say that I'm frustrated with it all would be an understatement, but there you go. It's just, they, they continue to get away with it and we're not doing anything to stop them. And I don't even know what measurements or, or, or what measures we have in place to stop them other than trying to bring a class action lawsuit. And I don't have the money to do that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I know. So, uh, but it's, it's just really interesting dynamic because usually when you have these meetings and it's like, oh, the big bad federal government and the poor, and it's like, um, that, that's not happening this time around. Mm -hmm. Another interesting thing happening is that there's uh, seems to be a more uh, uh, moaning about equalization, uh, but this time it's coming from the governments of Newfoundland and the government of BC, uh, which is kind of interesting because those are not conservative governments. Now, the government yeah. of BC has a, an election coming up, and uh, the gap is really narrowed between them and the sort of like united conservative movement that's been forming provincially there. And Newfoundland Labrador will have one coming up, I don't, I, not this year, but I think next year. And it seems that they're trying to show that they're uh, not good buddies because campaigning against the federal government is always a good thing. Um, so yeah, uh, Newfoundland and Labrador uh, is uh, making some equalization claims saying that, you know, it's kind of weird the last 15 years we've not received equalization even though things have been tough. And now this year we're finally going to get it for the first time. Uh, but, you know, some of the Labrador did find oil. So that kind of changed things for a while. Uh, and yeah, that was in over, the 70s. Yeah. And over, but once they started exp exp exploring a couple of other projects a little, a little, a little later on, there was some revenue. Uh, things that put relative to the other provinces and you know, various financial crises, mm -hmm. Newfoundland in the have, uh, the have side rather than the have not side for the long, for, for a certain amount of time, which was interesting for Newfoundland when it happened, 
process. But with equalization, when things start to turn, it takes a while for you to move from half to half, not because things turn in every province and it has to right. turn more in yours than in others and that type of stuff. So Newfoundland is basically saying we should have been getting help from UQ equalization before this because things have been tough for a while the last few years. Whereas BC is saying, because one recent thing that happened with equalization is in recent years, I'm saying like within the last 20 recent years, what I'm saying, um, Ontario started receiving equalization for the first time ever. Except they're not equalization payments anymore, per se, because the formula was changed under Harper. Yes. It's just re but, re redistribution of tax revenue. Yeah. Thanks. But that, with the formula, and then so now you have BC going like this, well, I don't understand why BC money should be going to pay support equalization in Ontario. They're bigger than they have more than us. And we know that's not how equalization works, right? Mm -hmm. Equalization is money that the federal government decides it is not going to keep for itself once it is paid to the federal government and redistribute. And all they are doing is arguing about the share and the proportion with this. But as soon as they start talking about, I do not know why our money is going to support another province, it's bullshit. Mm -hmm. So even David Eby, NDP, is campaigning on the lie right now that people in British Columbia are paying to support people in Ontario. And as premier, he's going to fight to stop that. He's going to spin the lie to try and get reelected, even though it's just that construction of the political enemy. So that's what's going on here. Uh, of the two, Mr. Fury probably has the more reasonable argument and saying, you know, is there a way for this to you know, maybe like change the proportions so that things can flip in a time in a way, in a way that's more timely as mm -hmm. crises are hitting? That you can change the formula in that way. You, you know, there might be some ways to do that. But the other one saying it's like, I don't think I don't think the money of the citizens of this province who I represent should be going to sell it to support a province, either that I don't like because they're French or that I don't like because they're bigger, but they happen to be going through a tougher time right now. Mm -hmm. But hey, they're the bigger province. We shouldn't be supporting them, they should be supporting us. Well, like everybody has ebbs and flows but when you start getting to those arguments that's just pure politicking and posture well pure it's, politics. It's, it's, so it's, it's, mr fury actually has something constructive yes yes yeah. all well, right sir, uh, we're gonna we're gonna have to wrap it up because uh, yes. I, gotta, I gotta get i gotta get back <laughs> this is not my vehicle so <laughs> yes yes no worries no worries um all right kids and cubs uh sorry uh, really trying not to not talk about the care and the AFN. But listen, I watched the, just to give you a quick lowdown, I watched the whole speech. It is not as bad as the headlines indicated and the images of people turning their back. That's really a big deal. Because but what he said in, in the moment wasn't like, I expected way worse that he had said something that was completely offensive and triggering and got people to turn back. No, people just turned their back because his past and who he is and whatnot, and they just don't believe him. Uh, yeah. and past relationship with the Harper government, which was horrible. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but he did make many blunders. Like, but it wasn't like he went in and told them that they needed better work. <laughs> so <laughs> he also didn't mention that he had done that also. Of course which, not. you know, probably if you were going to go talk to him for the first time, you might have wanted to own up to that and say that was wrong. But he just decided to gloss over that like that didn't happen. He did talk about the day of the apology from the federal government, but he didn't talk, say a word about what he did minutes before that happened mm -hmm. while he was there in a room where everybody knows what he did. So there well, were a lot of things he know, didn't say. And, and he won't because he is convinced that everything he does is right and just because he's a narcissist. Yeah. So. Yeah. There was a a lady who spoke afterwards in the Q and A. So let's say uh, when you're when you're back and whatnot, like this, we'll be able to to play, to play that one. Who pointed out that uh, it was the things it wasn't so much the things he did. He did say like he did say things like our indigenous people, which is like mm, you don't do that. Like this, and a couple of times he dropped some wackos in there talking about the prime minister. Which again, if you're in a room supposed to address the First Nations, if, and you start mentioning a wacko, you're sending a sign that you're there for you, not for them. Yeah. Wow. So those things, those things didn't just did not go over. 
Um, he did mention his four little three word lines once, which a lot of people said they didn't want to hear. <laughs> he mentioned it only once. <laughs> so, uh, but a lot was the things that he didn't say. He didn't talk about missing and murdered indigenous women and girls and true spirited people and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of things he didn't touch upon. And that, that and so the, the controversy was more what he chose not to say more than what he did say in certain ways. All right, kids and cubs, that's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We love making this for you. So we hope that you love listening to us, especially today, because this was kind of a weird one. Hopefully the mic will work tomorrow when I turn on the computer. Yeah, try, we'll and, see. try and figure it out after this. Yeah. Uh, if you would like to support us, please do, because the Ray Girl has made that possible. It, if you scan that QR code, it brings you to our pod page, podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words and if you click subscribe there when we have something fresh off the bandwidth it comes directly to you if you would like to support us in other ways then you need to make your way to the true north eager beaver media incorporated youtube page which is closing in on 4400 subscribers kids and cubs thank you so very 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 much we really appreciate that and I'm sure Kit Lane would be there telling us, uh, there you go, uh, telling us to, to make sure that we smash those buttons. <laughs> so please do, we really appreciate that. And if you'd like to help us in yet another way, the QR code by Mr. Grizzly's head will bring you to our coffee page. That's coffee, ko-fi.com slash eagerbeaver, lowercase letters, all in one word, uh, as a few of you have uh, recently. Thank you very much, and we will give you a more explicit thanks on, on a later show because Mr. Grizzly has to go. But uh, we do see the, do uh, the donations coming in. Thank you so, so, so very much. We're very, very grateful for all that you do for us. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Because democracy is something that you do. If you live in the provinces of British Columbia, Saskatchewan, and New Brunswick, please look in uh, to what you can do so uh, that you can prepare for the elections. If you happen to be living in Nova Scotia or in the GTA, uh, keep an ear up to the ground because there probably will be some uh, fundraising appeals coming to you soon to help out your neighbors. So please do the neighborly thing when the opportunity comes around, if you are able to help. Uh, all right, from the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager beaver saying it could be a tough world out there. So please be kind to and gentle with yourself. Mr. Grizzly, do you have some words of wisdom? Yeah, if you're in this part of the world today, stay hydrated and put on some sunscreen because it's going to be 36 to 37 degrees in the Kootenays. And uh, I think Alberta is currently still undergoing a heat warning. So be careful out there. It's uh, summertime. You want to have some fun and enjoy the hot weather, but don't place yourself in jeopardy. Yeah. Um, I've seen here in the chat from... Uh Kit Hyper T 007, are you guys going to update your Spotify soon? Uh, unfortunately, we can't uh, post episodes while uh, Mr. Grizzly uh, is uh, on vacation. Uh, we don't have the technology to do that remotely. Uh, yeah, but, uh, it's, 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 there's, because I have to download, edit, and then upload, and I have to do all of that on my computer at home. I can't do it on my laptop. It's just simply not viable. Right now, I'm hotspotting through my phone, which means I'm burning through data like crazy. So it's just not possible where I am right now. But sometime soon, uh, starting next week, because I will be back on Monday uh, in Ottawa, so I will get to work on those, uh, getting that updated as quickly as possible. Yes. And I've been doing my part. I've been working on some episode descriptions to get those updated because I was behind on those as well. Uh, so hopefully uh, we'll be, uh, I'm uh, I'm now only uh, 15 behind <laughs> as opposed to 25. <laughs> so working on them. Uh, all right, uh, Mr. Grizzly, I think it's time to cue the cock. Yes, it is. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters, CanadianTarot.com, their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Pepper Master. Hot pepper sauce is made from farm fresh ingredients Fill your taste buds and expand your mind.
We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music.